Ed Werder is back with the mothership. Our old buddy, uh, Cowboys reporter for ESPN, also covering other Dallas-related sports. And uh, Ed, joining us now. Congratulations, Ed. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm glad to be back and uh, appreciate being invited to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you on the show. Didn't the commissioner voice his displeasure when ESPN let you go a couple of years ago? I, I don't know if he – I doubt he said anything publicly. If he said anything, it was probably very pri- private and quiet. But um, I think in the league office there may have been some concern just about uh, the number of people who you know cover the NFL for, for ESPN who focus primarily on the sport itself. Um, and I just know that uh, Roger Goodell's been supportive of me uh, in terms of one of the first calls I got after I was laid off uh, was from an NFL team that wanted to hire me. And uh, Roger, uh, because I asked and he had previously offered, uh, was involved in trying to help me uh, negotiate that situation, which ultimately didn't work out. But um, he, he has been supportive of me and, and I'm appreciative and Uh, I know he doesn't expect that that's going to color my objectivity going forward. Ed is joining us from Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California. Is the field the same every day when you're there? Uh, You mean in terms of my role covering the team? No, just the drama. Yeah, because everything is sort of status quo with Zeke and Dak, uh, Mari Cooper, you know, Jerry Jones usually talks every day, I think. So is it? Is this Groundhog Day for you because there's no movement here? And when do you expect any movement on these contracts? Well, Jerry Jerry really doesn't talk every day. Uh, he's, he's spoken once in oh. the three days since I've been here. He generally talks before uh, and after every Cowboys game. It's it's one of the unique experiences that there, there is in the NFL, Dan, is that you know, during the regular season after every game, Jerry Jones goes in the locker room. Uh, and either listens to, you know, Jason Garrett address the team uh, or he participates in that process. And then he comes out and literally the media has to walk right past uh, one of the most flamboyant uh, owners in the NFL, a guy who is fully in charge of his team and has uh, very strong public opinions he's willing to share uh, in order to go in the locker room and then talk to the players who just performed in the game or to go down the hall and listen to the to the head coach who, uh, you know, managed the game. So, yeah, you, when Jerry Jones talks, uh, it would be a mistake not to be uh, within earshot or having the opportunity to, to ask him questions. But uh, I, I don't know that there's as much drama as people probably perceive there to be just based on how much talk there is publicly in the media about these three players, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott, and uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, you know, Travis Frederick, I thought, put it well yesterday, the center, uh, when he said, you know what, there's a lot of public discussion about these three players and their contracts but if you stick your head in any of our meeting rooms you won't hear anything at all about anything except you know playing the game of football and what our routine is going to be uh day to day who blinks first in these contract talks either zeke's side Dak's side even amari cooper's side well the way i've been told to expect the contracts to be executed um, even though the Cowboys insist they haven't prioritized one over the other. And Stephen Jones said, you know, hey, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're capable of multitasking and we can do more than one contract at a time. He said, in fact, we have offers to all three. And if they all got hot, we could conceivably sign them all in one day, although I don't expect that to happen. But he said what happens is, you know, we, uh, we send an offer – uh, they don't like it, uh, so they huff and puff about it. Then they send us a counter, uh, and we're upset about it, so we don't respond for you know a couple of weeks, and that's kind of how the way it plays out. Now, I, I think that despite what Jerry Jones has said about you don't need a rushing champion to um, you know win an NFL title, and you don't, and and boy, Tony Pollard, this fourth round pick uh, that we got is is really impressed and could carry the load. To say that after you know, four carries in the first preseason game uh, and su- and suggest that he could replace a two-time NFL rushing champion who led the NFL in carries since he came into the league is, is somewhat preposterous and obviously just posturing. Uh, I think Jerry recognizes he has to get a deal done uh, with Ezekiel Elliott before week one 
And I, but I don't think the time to stress about it has quite arrived yet. I think that will probably happen after the final preseason game. I mean, if you just look at it, Dan, you know, when I've been here and talking to Stephen Jones and talking to Jerry, you get the very strong sense that they feel this is the, the deepest and most talented roster that they've had uh, since they won three Super Bowls in the 1990s. That they think when they make their, their cuts, it's going to be the hardest thing they've had to do in 30 years from a roster standpoint. And, you know, Jerry Jones is 76 years old. And Jason Garrett, a coach, you know, he has supported uh, long beyond uh, the time most would. A guy he really wants to win and staked his reputation on uh, is, has been forced into the final year of his contract. And he's doing this with a first time you know, play caller in Kellen Moore, who's the new offensive coordinator. Do they really want to start the season without the player they built the whole thing around? I I just can't see them taking that risk. Who leaked the Dak Prescott numbers? Uh, I have no idea, but you would have to believe since it harmed uh, Dak Prescott to suggest that he was seeking $40 million, that it came from the team side. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a tough negotiation and, you know, Jerry did admit the other day, uh, and this is to his leverage, obviously, but you know, Hey, we, you know, Dak, if he wants to, you know, play on the last year of his contract, uh, and honor that, then we're, we're fine with that. If he wants to make $2 million instead of, you know, whatever, 70 million guaranteed, we'd be okay with that. But he also mentioned for the first time, the, the risk to each of these players, you know, the risk of injury to Dak Prescott, who, who has play, has never missed a game. He's the only uh, quarterback in franchise history to start, you know, the first three seasons of his career and not miss a game. But he did suffer 56 sacks last year, uh, the most in the NFC. Uh, and so Jerry mentioned, hey, there's a risk there if he decides to play out his contract. Uh, he could also perform poorly and uh, compromise his negotiating position going forward uh, if that were to be the occurrence, especially if he doesn't have Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, we saw how dependent Dak yeah. is on, uh, you know, the players around him when, when they didn't have Amari Cooper for the first half of the season. Uh, not that every quarterback in the NFL doesn't need a quality receiver, and the Cowboys front office has acknowledged its failure in that regard. Um, but, yeah, I think, I, think, uh, uh, I think it's possible that Dak will wind up not signing until after the season begins, and maybe he'll play out the whole year, although I think it's a, an incredibly risky decision. I've been saying that more NFL players should adopt the NBA players philosophy. If I'm Dak Prescott, I bet on myself. I got an unbelievable offensive line. You know, Zeke will be in camp eventually and Amari Cooper is going to be re-signed. How about a two year deal where you say to the Cowboys, look, I'm going to give you a discount. I'm going to sign two years. I want $63 million guaranteed two years. The new TV deal comes in in 2020. You go back into the hopper there into the marketplace but you bet on yourself. We see this with, you know, Kawhi Leonard is going to go, hey, I'll do two years in an option, or Kevin Durant is doing this. Why wouldn't you do that if you're Dak Prescott? Well, I mean, he might be willing to do that, but I can't conceive of any circumstance under which the Cowboys would agree to such a thing um, because the salary cap implications would be beyond their control. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing that, you know, Jerry Jones has stated is that, he, he's not worried about um, meeting the market that's been created for these players based on their position and, and the contracts most recently signed uh, at those positions. He's, his, his job is to manage the salary cap in such a way that they keep all three of these players plus, you know, other young players. I talked about how talented they think the roster is. I mean, they have, you know, players like Jalen Smith. I mean, he was a member of that 2016 draft class with Zeke and, and Prescott. And he's been dramatically underpaid uh, based on the fact that if he hadn't suffered that injury, he'd have been a top five pick. And instead he falls, you know, to 34 in the second round. So he deserves a new contract. Malik Collins is a player who's going to deserve another contract as a member of that same draft class. And so Jerry's challenge is, you know, to keep this nucleus together uh, going forward Uh, And to do that, he's got to be careful about, you know, his expenditure on the three players that we've spent a lot of time talking about. And it was interesting to me, Dan, the other day, he said, hey, you know what? We could get a deal done with somebody other than one of these three players before we do a deal with any of the three. And and I think the player could be Jalen Smith, um, who's a phenomenal linebacker and become the leader of their defense. And as a player who overcame a, a devastating knee injury in his final college game that a lot of people, quite honestly, 
uh, mocked the Cowboys for drafting him in the second round. But that's yeah. one of the big risks that Jerry took that, that has paid huge dividends. Hasn't always worked out that way, but it has in the case of Jalen Smith. Where's Zeke Elliott? He's still in Cabo or wherever? You know what? I, I don't know where he is. Um, uh, he was in Cabo, but I don't know his whereabouts. I just know he's not with his team. Um, and if anywhere else he is, as long as he's uh, behaving properly and not putting himself <laughs> in any kind of jeopardy with off the field decisions, I don't, I don't think is of, of much concern, but you know, and, and the Cowboys have said, Hey, you know, we're confident he can hit the ground running. We know he's working out and handling it as a professional, but you know, when he missed the six games during a suspension and went to Cabo and was kind of responsible for himself. Uh, remaining in football shape for when he came back for what you know they imagined would be a playoff run at that point uh, he was immediately effective he had 97 yards in the game against Seattle his first week back and then he had over I think 107 against Philly the next week but the Cowboys felt like he came back and he was not uh, in 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 shape that he was you know five to ten pounds too heavy obviously they can't afford for that to happen when they start the season uh, if he comes in late more trepidation to sign Dak Prescott long-term or Zeke Elliott? Uh, I wouldn't worry at all about signing uh, Dak Prescott as long as you're comfortable with his skill set and uh, you you believe he can succeed with it in your offense with whatever coaching staff you have. As a, And I have no doubt the Cowboys feel that way. I mean, uh, John, John Kitna talks about this kid and he says, hey, the first time you know, I, he's a new quarterback's coach. He says, first time I talked to Dak Prescott, he said to me, I want to be the best that's ever played. And I want you to, to get that out of me. I want you to coach me hard. I want you to tell me when I'm right and when I'm wrong. And you can put that in writing. So, uh, you know, there's no equivocation about, uh, within the organization about Dak's ability to perform at the level necessary in their mind to contend for championships going forward. Uh, you know, f- physically, uh, he's got, you know, very thick legs, you know, has, like I said, played every game. Uh, so there's not really an injury concern with him. Uh, he's, he's done nothing but show good judgment on and off the field. He's, he's highly respected by his teammates. I mean, for him, Dan, to come in that first year when Tony Romo got hurt after being the starter for 10 years, for Dak to perform so well and have such a great relationship with the locker room and the coaching staff that there was no chance whatsoever for Tony Romo to ever get his job back, I think really speaks to how this player is viewed by his teammates and his coaching staff. So uh, I guess um, – I would have fewer qualms about investing in him and, and given the length of time quarterbacks typically play than I would a running back, you know, who, whose career is typically much shorter and Ezekiel Elliott, who's, you know, one bad decision away from a, a long suspension at the same time, they, they made the decision when they drafted him fourth overall, that they need an elite running back to operate their team the way they want. And that's not the way most teams operate. Most teams value the quarterback and the passing game over the running game. That's not the way the Cowboys are structured. You know, they've got three highly paid offensive linemen among the highest at their positions uh, on the offensive line. They drafted Elliott fourth overall, made a big investment in him, and are about to make another one. Uh, I, I was instructive, Dan, week 17 last year. They're getting ready to go in the playoffs. The Giants game is meaningless to, meaningless to them. Who did they sit? They sat Ezekiel Elliott. They played Dak Prescott. Ed, great stuff. Glad you're back with the mothership. Of course, covering the Cowboys and other uh, Dallas-related sports. Uh, We appreciate your time as always. Dan, thanks for the great questions. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you, my friend. That's Ed Werder, Cowboys reporter for ESPN. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.